Hi, it's Lance Yolanoff, and I have got Apple's new MacBook Air 13-inch with the Apple M1 chip. Now, this MacBook Air is going to look completely familiar to anybody who saw the last MacBook Air. It's got the same size, the same specs, the same features. What's different is what's inside. Why don't we talk briefly about what you're going to find inside this MacBook Air, the brand new MacBook Air with the Apple M1 chip. So it's a $999 uh, ultralight portable laptop. It's 11.97 inches by 8.36 inches, which is exactly the same measurements. It goes from 0.16 inches to 0.63 inches from here to here. Still fits in that manila envelope. If I had one, I'd slide it in. The laptop still weighs 2.8 pounds, so it's still light, obviously very portable. It has uh, the same Magic Keyboard that you got in the last edition, which is obviously a big update from the, the uh, Butterfly Keyboard. Great to use. Uh, it has your Touch ID button right here, uh, where, which I've been using consistently to unlock the device and to uh, sign in to various sites and apps uh, so you can have your passwords connected to it. Uh, it's quite useful. We got the same five and a half inch force touch trackpad. I mean, the thing is monstrous, but it's great to use and you still have enough room for your, basically to rest your palms on either side if that's how you like to type. It's got the same retina display, which has a 2560 by 1600 resolution. So it's uh, bright, it's uh, 400 nits and uh, you know, just looks great. Uh, usable outdoors, obviously, uh, but um, fantastic for watching videos and fo you know editing photos, uh, you know playing games. Just looks as good as the last one. And above uh, the Retina display is the same 720p FaceTime camera. But let's get to what you really want to talk about, which is Apple's new M1 chip. So back in June, Apple announced that they were building their own silicon, Apple Silicon. And uh, they said that they would be migrating all Macs to the Apple Silicon over a two year period. Now, Apple has announced and introduced three Macs that are running the M1 chip by Apple. This is one of them. So we have the Apple Mac Mini, we have the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and we have this MacBook Air. Apple built the M1 chip around its A-series design. That's right, the same CPUs, the mobile CPUs that you see inside your iPhones and your iPads. And the M1 chip is built around that sort of same framework. And what this means is that this is a ARM-based CPU, basically a mobile CPU that has been engineered for desktop use, but that also means that it can support mobile apps from iOS and iPadOS. Now, inside the M1 CPU are eight cores. There are four performance cores and four efficiency cores. There's a 16-core neural engine, and there is an eight-core GPU. Now, there are two versions of the M1. There's the eight-core GPU, and there's the seven-core GPU. Now, I did get with this, uh, with this laptop, I did get the eight-core GPU. So when I talk about performance, your performance may vary just a little bit. Now, while this is the first time, the M1 chip is the first time that Apple is building its own silicon, it's really not the first time that Apple has been involved with making chips for its devices because all of the A-series chips, it has been working closely with silicon partners to develop the A, you know, A11 Bionic, the A12, the A14 Bionic. So now it has full control and it also means that it is full control of the stack. It has everything from the hardware to the operating system, to the mobile CPU, running it underneath. Now, I know I said that the uh, Apple's M1 chip is an ARM chip. It's ARM-based, which means it's a mobile chip, but the performance is not mobile. It's something much more. Now, it's clocked at 3.25 gigahertz, and it is literally blowing away the benchmarks, not just for mobile systems, but for previous MacBook Airs based on Intel CPUs. So let's put these numbers in context. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, we have scores of over 1735 and 
for a single core and a 7302 for multi-core. Now, the numbers don't mean anything by themselves, but when you start to compare them to previous numbers for MacBook Airs built on things like the Intel CPU, Core i3, Core i5, Core i7. So I just happened to look at the Core i7 for a MacBook Air uh, from this year, the ones that were released in March. And the numbers, uh, so a single core was 1,141. So compare that to the 1,735. And then for a multi-core, you had 3,083. Compare that to the multi-core score of over 7,000 for the M1 chip. Now let's talk about graphics performance. Let's run the graphics benchmark, shall we? Wow. Uh, so uh, an Intel Core i7 uh, MacBook Air from uh, earlier this year, the numbers are approximately, well, 7,114. Um, <laughs> this is this is the highest number I've gotten on OpenCL, which is basically a measure of graphics performance, uh, 18,915. It's off the charts. Uh, this, is, this is really impressive graphics performance. Those incredible benchmark numbers would not mean much if they didn't translate into real world performance. Apple has done a very good job here. So what do you have? You have some applications that are universal apps that will run just as well on Intel as they do on the M1 chip. You know, all of Apple's native apps are going to run very well on top of the M1. There are also apps that are basically built to run on Intel. And what they will use is Rosetta 2. So Rosetta 2 makes it possible for applications that are built for Intel, for example, Adobe Photoshop, to run on top of an ARM-based CPU. Also, you can run iOS apps, a collection of iOS apps, and a collection of iPad OS apps. So if you're concerned that an ARM-based chip won't have enough power to get real work done, I can tell you from experience it's ready to do the work. So this is Final Cut Pro, uh, and I'm actually editing uh, multiple streams of 4K video. And not only did I edit, and I'm able to do like interesting cross cuts, uh, overlays, and duplicate stuff, I can render a 20 minute 4K video in about 10 minutes. All of that graphics power means that the MacBook Air 13 is a really good gaming system. While I was using Apple's MacBook Air with the M1 chip by Apple, I really never thought about, oh, it's got a mobile CPU and it. maybe I should go easy on it. I just kept loading desktops, loading apps, uh, just the way I do with any laptop that I use. It never stuttered, it never paused. I, I just never noticed that I was overtaxing the system because I don't think I was. I felt like the list of iOS and iPad apps that uh, run on the M1 platform was maybe a little bit limited. I was also surprised that uh, the applications could not run full screen, at least the ones that I tried out. This, for example, is Kitchen Stories, uh, which is great. It's got tons of videos to learn how to make really mouth-watering dishes. Uh, but there is no way to take this app screen and make it full screen. But if I want, I can change the aspect ratio. Now, I don't think any of this would have gone as smoothly if Apple didn't also release its brand new Mac OS Big Sur, which is designed to help apps get the most out of the M1 CPU. And it's done a good job. It feels, you know, again, it doesn't feel like I'm suddenly in a mobile system. Everything feels the same as it would with a previous MacBook Air, but it's all updated. And I do like Mac OS Big Sur because it has some cool new features. It has updated maps. Uh, it has an updated uh, notification center. Uh, it maybe is a tiny bit more like uh, iOS in some ways. You know, you have a control, a control center that uh, might seem somewhat familiar. You might also notice that Launchpad has lost its rocket and now it's got a, a sort of a grid of, of app icons that, again, looks a little bit more like iOS. And so that's what your Launchpad now looks like. A couple of other really important benefits of the new Apple M1 uh, chip. One, it's got uh, instant wake from sleep and you just open it and it's ready to go. It also starts up much more quickly. But the really big change is that this guy sips power. Now, Apple 
uh, said during the keynote that they were promising between 15 and 20 hours of battery life. So 15 for wireless web browsing, 20 hours for wireless video streaming or video playback. So what's the truth? The truth is this has incredible battery life. I achieved basically the 20 hour video streaming benchmark and I've gotten, I would say between 13 and 15 hours of constant work with all different apps and, and web browsing as well. It, this, this is definitely the most efficient chip, the most efficient and powerful chip I have ever seen on a laptop. Now, as I said, I received the $1,249 uh, MacBook Air, which has the eight core GPU and a 512 gigabytes of storage. All the systems have eight gigabytes of RAM to start. You can upgrade to 16 gigabytes, but you know, because I have a slightly more performance CPU in here, I don't know if your benchmarks would be exactly the same or your performance would be exactly the same, especially on the graphics side where I've got that extra core, but that's just a single extra core. I mean, the difference between the performance of the M1 CPU and an Intel CPU in that space on the graphics side is just not even in the same ballpark. So I don't think a single core is going to make a difference. It's rare to make such a, a fundamental shift at a platform level and have it go so smoothly. I really think that Apple's done an excellent job uh, with the Apple M1 CPU with their own silicon uh, and the, the integration with their popular, some of their most popular Macs, the, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and MacBook Mini, so smart. This is an excellent, excellent laptop with some of the best battery life and performance I have ever seen. I had a lot of fun using it and I think it's going to be very, very popular. Thanks for watching. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe.